Hello, I'd like to introduce you Mrs. Tannenbaum, who is an exceptional collector of jewelry, costume jewelry, would you say? Vintage so costume vintage jewelry. Vintage costume jewelry, and who is going to take us through her collection. Thank you very much for having us. Thank you. Uh, we're going to see some exquisite pieces, and uh, Hallmark is really color, so be ready for that. I always look for a piece that intrigues me, that can be a wow factor and that I can live with and love. And so I have my personal collection consists of mostly very large, colorful, um, well-made, well-constructed pieces um, dating from the Victorian era to the um, present day. My favorite era is um, the Hollywood because they really knew how to pile it on. Most of the things you're going to see are really outside the box, oversized, and very colorful. I just recently wrote um, the book on Henry Schreiner. It was a manufacturer in New York during the 50s and 60s. These are um, his most um, quintessential pieces. They're called ruffle pins, and he created the kite stone. Today, I have about 500 of his pieces, and I am always coming upon another one that I don't have. It was very specific. Each piece is handmade, um, very small quantities. His frames are rarely heavy. He really hones it down to the very, very minimum. He's an artist that I really love. And I go from that, from the 50s, to contemporary. These pieces are by an Israeli designer. Yeah, Dorit Dekel. That's exactly right. I was wowed by her sense of creativity, daring, color. Every year I go back to pick up another piece from her. I, I think her work is great. I am a great fan of Bakelite from the 30s. I have a vast collection. I love the fact that in the 30s when there was Great Depression and um, they had all of this material um, that they used for radios, they were able to create inexpensive jewelry for the public. I started collecting 35, 40 years ago. This is probably the most unusual Bakelite that I have in my collection. Um, first of all, it's navy blue and red, and secondly, it's figural. And uh, again, it was done in very small quantity. But these are th um, three major pieces of Chanel's. This is all poured glass in the Byzantine style, as you could see, a marvelous piece, a real museum piece. And this was advertised very widely in the um, 40s. It's called his bow necklace, as you could see. But So you do wear the jewelry? Every day. Every day? If I go to the pharmacy, I look like I'm going to uh, the ball at, uh, you know, one of the movie balls, because I kind of love it. It makes me feel happy. It makes me feel, um, educated. I, I feel good when I, um, when I wear them. I was in the art world. I was a corporate um, consultant and um, it was the early 80s uh, when things were really not doing too well corporately and so there was a lull and Howie and I went to London uh, as we always did to um, find our other collectibles. We're voracious collectors in many fields and I would, um, I discovered this, this cachet of the most beautiful jewelry. I was captivated by these objets of art, you know, and so I bought 20 of them at that time, and I started looking for them. Wherever we went, I would look for them, and that's what really started it. I never intended it to be a business, but I had about 3,500 pieces uh, about four years into it, and I pitched um, a trunk show to Holt Renfrew. At the time, Paul Rath was um, the director, and he was really a Renaissance man. He loved it, and he took it on as a collection, not as a, a trunk show. And so I had a department there for 26 years. So I'm very, very proud of the collection. 